Welcome to Kadampa Podcasts. These podcasts offer practical solutions to daily challenges and help guide us to a happier and more peaceful state of mind. In each episode, you will find an extract from a teaching given by one of various Kadampa Buddhist teachers worldwide. All these teachings are inspired by the profound wisdom of Venerable Geshe Kelsang Gyatso Rinpoche, a Buddhist master for our time. We hope you will enjoy listening. So the wonderful news about the mind is that the mind's capacity is infinite. And, uh, you know, you get a certain point in your life where your body has reached its peak. But as a human being, we'll never get to the point where our mind has reached its peak. So this is really good. It's really, it's really good news. Okay, so if we stop identifying with this external thing and start to identify with our mind... There's a lot of vitality in there. There's a lot of growth that can happen. There's a lot of development that can happen. We can take our mind to its highest level. And the highest level, from a Buddhist point of view, is permanent peace. Is where the mind experiences permanent peace. And this is probably what you've heard of as a nirvana or enlightenment. So it's a very high level of realization. So all of these... Um, Oh, so how do we um, achieve this permanent peace um, by training our mind? Um, and we do this by putting all these different teachings of Buddha into practice. And these, these teachings that Buddha gave, he gave 84,000 teachings. And um, they are held within what's called uh, Lam Rim or stages of the path. So these are stages of the path to enlightenment. Right? So it's Lamrim, or stages of the path to enlightenment, and it takes us from an ordinary mind to the highest level that we can become. Now, it, you know, for some people, they're not interested in going to the highest level that they can become. They're not really interested in becoming a Buddhist, and that's completely fine, because Buddha taught in a way that people can use the teachings in whatever way is beneficial to them. So there's a lot of Buddhist teachings now in mainstream, isn't there? Psychology, sociology, hospitals, etc. They use a lot of Buddhist um, Buddhist theory and philosophy. So we can incorporate little bits of it to make uh, to uplift our mind, or we can uh, follow the whole path to take our mind to. Uh, enlightenment. So the method uh, that Buddha Buddha gave were his teachings, which are called Dharma. These teachings of Buddha are called Dharma. And within these teachings are all the techniques that we need in order to uplift and train our mind. So we, uh, in this way, um, we can become, uh, uh, we can sort of become like wisdom warriors of the mind, you know, uh, so our mind, uh, through putting these different techniques into practice, becomes stronger and stronger, even though our, as time goes on, as we age, etc., our body's becoming uh, weaker, uh, our mind becomes stronger. Okay. And so this is, you know, where you read stories of great Buddhist masters, you know, and um, how a master refers to both men and women, because Buddhist mistresses doesn't sound right, does it? Um, so just because of the sort of the way it, you know, it interprets in our society. Um, so uh, th these, these Buddhist masters, um, you know, they were able to uh, remain in perfect concentration for ages. Nothing disturbed their mind. Nothing disturbed their mind. And everything that they did and everything that they thought was only beneficial, only helpful. Okay? So Buddhism teaches that within each of us, we have the potential, each of us, without exception, we have the potential for permanent peace. We have the potential for great wisdom. Okay? Um, we have the potential to uplift our mind so that it can be of great benefit to others. But what distracts us and stops us is that we allow our negative minds uh, to get root and we believe them and we hold on to them. Okay? So we've got to learn to, um, to let these minds go. Okay? So, um, so from this morning, um, there's one of the points is that we've got to accept, you know, I've got to accept that life is hard and that is normal for everybody. It's not possible to have a human life without problems. I have to learn to accept that um, 
I have a choice actually of whether I allow my life to break me or whether I use it in order to develop and train my mind to its highest level. You know, I, I, I have this choice. I have to stop focusing too much externally all the time and instead start to watch what's going on in my internal world. If my internal world is good, my external world will be fine. If my internal world, my mind is not good, then it doesn't matter how good my external world is, I will not be happy. Right? So it's learning to, okay, I've got to start watching. You know, start watching my mind. What's my mind thinking? How often is it negative? How often is it negative about myself? You know, becoming much more aware. Because we're not even aware often of how negative the mind gets. You know, we're so familiar often with these voices of self-doubt and discouragement that we don't even notice them anymore. You know, if someone else could get some sort of a machine and listen to our thoughts about ourselves, you know, they probably would be quite shocked. So we've got to, um, yeah, become aware of it. Awareness is the key, isn't it? From awareness comes change. Right? So having negative thoughts, negative feelings, they have no function other than to disturb our mind and take away our peace. Okay? Having negative thoughts about yourself or others has no function other than to disturb our peace. Right? Like if you had a problem and you came to me and you said, oh, Bridget, I have this problem. And I say to you, okay, well, what I think we should need to do is go away and I want you to think about that problem as 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 often as you can. Never stop thinking about it. And whilst you're thinking about it, I want you to think that it's your fault and that you're a failure and um, the world is against you and that you're useless. I want you to go away and think like that and then the answer will come. <laughs> All right? It doesn't work, does it? Okay? So what we're doing, it's, you know, it's a science, isn't it? What we're doing doesn't work. It doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't help ourselves or others in any way, does it? And yet we keep doing it. Right? So the first thing is like, okay, I'm going to stop. Okay? I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to, I'm going to change my way of viewing. I'm going to listen to this voice more. And when it gets negative, I'm going to say, shut up. Right? I'm going to say, shut up. And instead, I'm going to say to myself, you know, I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Right? I'm going to think about all the difficulties I have faced and how I'm still here and I'm still trying. So I'm doing okay. Right? I'm going to think about the good qualities in my mind. You know, sometimes when we think of good qualities, we tend to think or to have a meaningful life, we tend to think that we have to have this incredible sort of, I don't know, this life where we do huge things, you know, that of, of great benefit. But actually, it's not true, you know. Just doing lots of little things lifts the mind. We don't have to be, you know, I don't know, jumping into burning buildings and lifting cars above our head to rescue people and jumping into rivers and, you know, blah, 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 to, to feel good about ourselves. We can do lots of little things. Small things, and there's more, so it's um, yeah. So just small things we do, you know, just looking at someone, giving them a smile, changes their day. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Don't you think? Even if they don't smile back, it, at least I think, oh, at least there's somebody, you know. Do you know what I mean? So it's it is we don't have to do lots of big things to change our experience of being a better person. We can do little things. Okay? So if you think that your life isn't meaningful because you've never managed to do that big thing <laughs> that you think needs to be done, just think of all the small things that you've done and they add up. You know, if you live a life and you're surrounded by people, you know, it is definite that throughout your life you have done some good things for people. We all have. We might have done some awful things as well, but we have done some good things. Okay? So let's think, think about that rather than all the rubbish that we get stuck on because that's what happens, isn't it? We get stuck, oh, I, I did this and I did that and I'm full of regret and guilt and all that stuff. It's no good. Okay? 
So we move forward and we think, okay, no, okay, I have done some good things. Everybody's done some good things. I'm sure I've done some good things. Bridget said I've done some good things. What are those good things? <laughs> you know, hey, yeah, I've definitely done some good things. Um, so you, we try to th think in that way. And then we, okay, so the going forward, I'll do small things. I'll just do small things. Lots of small things. And we live in a society where it's very easy to do little small things that actually are big gestures to others. If you feel inspired by this podcast, then dive deeper into the timeless wisdom of modern Kadampa Buddhism by following the link in the episode description. We look forward to reconnecting with you in the next episode of Kadampa Podcasts.